I can no longer support your growth without hindering my own. I walked away from you so I could run into me. And as much as I miss you, it would have been worse to lose me. I was dealing with a lot of infidelity in my marriage and it's not because like he was, mm, he was the first person I told I had my son who didn't look at me in the way that I thought everyone should look at me. And I fell for that. For the fact that he loved my insecurity. And I wanted to fight for him. And I thought together we could be better. And I knew that he was broken and I knew that I was broken, but it was in many ways, it was church. It was what I wanted church to be, where it was okay to not be okay. And then the more his broken pieces started cutting me, it made me realize if I, if I was maybe too in too deep, that I had made him my savior and hadn't been saved myself. I have been following Sarah um, on Instagram for a couple of years. I originally stopped following her dad. I can really relate to Sarah. You know, Sarah is a preacher's kid. I was raised in the church. Her story is unbelievable. Sarah's message really resonated with me because it comes from a place of transparency. Our girls are not going to heal if people are not transparent. I love the way that she speaks from the heart because you got to keep it real because people, you have to speak to people in their language. I think Sarah Jake's message was really powerful. I'm thankful for her. I love her transparency and just her willingness to be used by God. The sister had me crying. I wasn't supposed to be crying. And so I'm honored to, to be on this journey with Sarah. I think she's an amazing young woman and I absolutely love her. I'm closing Atlanta with a movement that's very I think incredible and powerful for our generation of women, young girls, it's called the Sister Accord. And so I'm sitting in this room with these young girls and you know, I know that they don't know what to expect and I don't know what to expect, but I know from the very moment that I get up that I want it to be real, I want it to be authentic. And so I think Sister Accord is an incredible opportunity for young girls and young women to have an opportunity to be transparent, to love on one another, take the power that we create in that room and allow it to overflow into our respective lives. If you would, please give a warm welcome to my sister, Sarah Jakes. The bio also failed to mention that I am a reformed hater. And by that, <laughs> I had this thing when I was younger because I was so insecure about myself that I tried to pick out flaws about other people. And so someone just couldn't have it all together. Like I had to find a way to knock them down. And um, it was something that I dealt with for a very long time. It was just uh, my own personal struggle with loving myself made me create these different um, issues that I saw with other young women. And it wasn't until much later in life that I realized that it really wasn't anything wrong with them, that there was a lot wrong with me. It's always very delicate when I speak to young girls because I don't want my story to be like this license and permission slip to do what you want to. And I recognize that it's an intricate balance between telling them, you know, like, hey, I survived so you could survive too and um, making sure that I at least tell them that it is in many ways a cautionary tale. So when I talk to young girls, I, I always try to be very stylish because that goes over very well with the young girls. And then I keep it real with them. Like I'm never preaching at them. It's like, listen, don't judge me. Like I'm coming in here like as a big sister and I'm telling you this is what happened to me and I don't want this to happen to you because it made my life so much harder than I it than it had to be. Hi. How are you? So now when you, you gotta say good things about me on camera. Don't tell them I'm ratchet. That's not like public information. Tell us, you know, what did you take away? What are some of those key takeaways in line with the principles of the sister accord as we've talked about this morning? I was kind of surprised, like looking at you. I was just like, I'm not. Oh, I was just like, oh my God, like, that's why I don't really like judge people. That's why I think it's good that we like pour compliments and love on one another because when we spread that love, it always comes back to us. Can you get a group hug? <laughs> Thank you guys. Let me tell you this now, if you learn to love yourself past your mistake, if you learn to love your big forehead and your pimples and your whatever, if you learn to love your process, 
then you'll that's half the battle. You know, I get that hurt people hurt people, and I hear that statement all the time, but I truly believe that healed people heal people. I think that's the power of the movement that Sarah is creating, is to show that when you are healed, you get an opportunity to go back and heal somebody else. I think it's uh, very important to continue to uplift our girls, continue to show them that they can. Uh, even as adults, we need to be reminded that we can. You have to take off the mask. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be open to sharing so that other people learn from your experiences. And I believe that that's what Sister Accord is. It's an opportunity for you to come amongst other women of all ages and your own sisters who want to inspire you to, to be better. Next time you see a young woman on the street and you like her shoes, don't, don't be a hater. Don't be like me. Tell her, girl, I like your shoes. And she doesn't have to say thank you. She can walk right past you. You don't have to call her no name when she walks past. Like, oh, did you see? She didn't even acknowledge that. Because you sowed a seed of love. It's not on us to determine what happens to that seed of love, but if you sow love into other people's life, that love will automatically rebound and come back to you. So I find myself here now speaking to women and men of all ages, of all ethnicities, and I'm learning that as much as shame had a hold of me, as much as guilt had a hold of me, that love has such a place inside of my heart now that it overflows into other people. I think that everybody has like a bunch of dark moments, like some, some real kind of gloomy periods. My darkest moment was realizing that my self-esteem was so low that how could I expect anyone to love me if I didn't love myself? Everyone in my family was just so perfect, and I'm actually the first person to graduate from college on my mother's side of the family, but I'm also the first person to become a 37-time felon. I was really struggling with drinking and I was seeking so much acceptance but I just knew I had to accept myself for who I was and for who I was not. I know that's what I'm called to do. I mean, I know it's my ministry. And I, I don't really think I could have realized this without being with Sarah. Her story of being lost and found just let me know that I had nothing to be ashamed of. If you care and love yourself, if you care for and pull on what is so true inside of you, you will become a bigger and better and bolder and brighter and more beautiful spirit walking the earth. Dear God, I thought that seeing you in my life meant opening my eyes to everything around me. Now I know you can only be seen by opening my heart to everything you can do inside of me. Signed opening my heart. I was doing some interviews and they told me, you know, I won't spend this much time, you know, talking about your father because I know you're your own person. And I was like, I really appreciate that. I spent a really long time running from my last name because I didn't feel like I deserved it. Stronger.